The Senate is back in session today. The House is set to return next week, and lawmakers have a long list of items waiting for them. At the top of the list, the federal budget, which is set to expire on September 30th and will need to be renewed to avoid a full-fledged government shutdown. Also hanging in the balance is the fallout from Senator Tommy Tuberville's hold on military nominations. I mean, Three. I mean, this is this is getting so serious. Branches. You, 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 you now have the leaders of the branches of, of, of our services, armed services, saying we have you're that. really, really damaging yeah. readiness for our troops across I, I, the world. I don't know what he thinks he's doing. On, this is on military nominations. There's a hold because of him. Three of America's five military branches do not have a Senate-confirmed service chief in place. Many generals and admirals being forced to perform two roles simultaneously. That fact has prompted the secretaries of the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army to co-write an op-ed for the Washington Post entitled Three Service Secretaries to Tuberville. Stop this dangerous hold on senior officers. And they write in part, we are proud to work alongside exceptional military leaders who are skilled, motivated, and empowered to protect our national security. These officers and the millions of service members they lead are the foundation of America's enduring military advantage. Yet, this foundation is being actively eroded by the actions of a single U.S. Senator, Tommy Tuberville, who is blocking the confirmation of our most senior military officers. Thus far, the hold has prevented the Defense Department from placing almost 300 of our most experienced and battle-tested leaders into critical posts around the world. Three of our five military branches, the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, have no Senate-confirmed service chief in place. This is just, it's Instead, these jobs and dozens of others across the force are being performed by acting officials without the full range of legal authorities necessary to make the decisions that will sustain the United States military they, edge. They, they can't make the decisions that they need to make. That's impacting readiness. And I know Tommy Tuberville doesn't care, obviously. But uh, he knows on, this. On a, he personal, knows on a personal level, planning for, fam for service families, for, for, for children of service members, um, they should be uh, in, in their new locations, in their new schools. Everything's been held up. Their lives have been put on hold because the promotions aren't going through. And then, of course, planning for our military, long-term planning for our military can't be done because, as these service chiefs said, they don't have a full range of power to make a lot of those decisions. So readiness is at risk. And Willie... Uh, I, it's, you know, the Republicans are, are forfeiting what they always claim to have, which is some, some special link with the military, despite the fact they've spent years trashing the United States military, saying they wish they were more like Russians, saying that they're weak, saying that they're woke. That's all a lie. Our military is stronger than it's ever been. Uh, and relative to the, the rest of the world, the strongest it's been weak. since 1945. And yet you have one Republican senator that other Republican senators are allowing him to do. One Republican senator damaging the readiness of the United States Armed Forces in a way that just it makes Vladimir Putin, it makes the communist Chinese, makes the North Koreans, makes everybody so happy that one senator is able to damage the United States military's readiness as much as Tommy Tuberville is able to do that. Again, you've got to start asking, quite, why, why is he doing this? The Republicans supposedly don't want him to do this. The people of Alabama don't want him to do this. Why does he continue acting in a way that damages the readiness of the United States military? It just makes no sense. And he says he's doing it because he doesn't want the military to allow its service members to travel between states for abortions, for reproductive care. So this is the political hill he's willing to die on. And you have, you're right, people like Mitch McConnell saying, I disagree with what Senator Tuberville is doing. But well, in our something. Senate, under our rules, 
He can do it. Well, does, do you not have any power? Do the other Republican leadership not have any power over Senator Tuberville to say, hey, knock this off, you've made your point. John, I'll add some, some more numbers here. The Pentagon said last week 301 generals and admirals are sitting in limbo right now, including 83 three-star and four-star nominations, generals pending right now. And again, a lot of Republicans in the Senate have said they disagree with what Tuberville is doing, but he continues and he will continue. And this has become his pet issue. His argument last week, he said, people have known for a long time that the U.S. military is top heavy, saying we have too many generals so that this isn't a big deal, oh. in his view. Right. And this is the first time in history that so many of these seats have have sat open. Of course, this isn't just impacting generals. It's impacting uh, regular tr troops and their families who are can't know what the future holds because they're on hold because they are in limbo because of this. Uh, and, and there are multiple things going on here. We just mentioned McConnell. This is one of the things that's raised eyebrows among those in Washington, wondering if McConnell's grip on power is a little diminished right now with his ongoing health challenges. Um, you know, he pushes back on that, but that is persistent in D.C. right now. Democrats have been sharply critical of this throughout. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Schumer has denounced this at every turn. Re the unhappiness behind the scenes from Republicans is growing, but, but there hasn't been a push to get Tuberville to stop. They simply haven't, and they're willing to let him, even if they're privately unhappy, they're letting him command the stage like this. And it, it comes at a moment, of course, where the, we have a, a land war in Europe where the United States is, is trying to increase its readiness posture uh, because of that because of potential challenges from China down the road, from rogue actors like North Korea, North Korea and Iran. Uh, you know, those in the White House are, are furious about this, and it becomes evident nearly every day from President Biden, who is loath to criticize his former Senate colleagues by name, those he served with, those he didn't, but he has such respect for the institution. He is no longer loath to criticize Senator Tuberville for what he's doing. I, I mean, uh, George Conway, we, back when we were Republicans, we used to take great pride at how much we we fought uh, for the strengthening of the the United States military, the readiness of the United States military. I was on on the armed services, you know, four terms for for a reason because that's what my constituents wanted. That's what Republican constituents used to want. Now we have Republicans who are saying the United States military, which is the strongest in the world, just is. There, I mean, there's just not a close second. We now have Tommy Tuberville saying, Republicans saying that, oh, the military's top heavy. Who said that? Nobody. No, nobody that knows anything about how strong our military is. Then you got Republicans saying, we need to be more like the Russians. We need to be more manly like the Russians, like the <clears throat> Russians' military. You, 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 you've, got, you've got Republicans that say that our military's weak and it's woke, and Republicans saying that our our, our leaders are stupid and fat pigs. I mean, the, the insults just keep flying towards extraordinarily strong, uh, uh, vital United States military. And if anybody thinks they're weak and well, just ask the 500 Russian uh, 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 troops that tried to bum rush the United States military in Syria a few years back. You can't really ask them because they were all, all gunned down, all blown apart in about three minutes. Uh, so why is it that just Republicans have this blind spot when it comes to how strong and how successful and how good our United States military is? What, why, do, why do these Republicans hate the United States military so much? They hate the United States military because it's part of the United States government. And this is basically the Republicans have become anti-American, anti-government, anti-the anti United States. That's their now, that's their shtick now. That's why you see them attacking law enforcement, uh, the FBI, pro, the Justice Department, state and federal prosecutors, and they attack the, the, the institutions that normally Republicans were very, very supportive of. And what, what now is just this nihilistic attack on, on American institutions. And it's, and it's also uh, it brings to mind the fact that we live in a completely different era now. I mean, the Senate rules that, would, that allow uh, one senator uh, to block a unanimous consent agreement to have these batch nominations sent to the floor. I mean, all these rules, these arcane Senate rules that we talk about that we don't really talk about, but, but have just curious effects depend on good faith of the members, good faith and collegiality of the members. And that's one thing that the Republican Party has completely abandoned, which is not just the truth, but good faith and, and, and 
just collegiality. Yeah.